uh, the building enclosure is what we're going to focus on in this section, uh, and that is that component, the physical component of the building that separates the inside from the outside. That's what the building enclosure is there for. But it's also a major source of building problems. Heat, air, and moisture, whether it's energy issues, whether it's mold issues, whether it's comfort problems, almost all end up happening at the building enclosure. Vitruvius, um, which is something most architecture schools teach, is this uh, architectural commentator from around the time of Christ who said uh, that durability, convenience, and beauty is what a building should do. And notice the order durability, then convenience, and then beauty. And that's the difference between great architecture and just a building, right? Is that it does all these things and it's beautiful. Unfortunately, we focus so much on the end goal that we don't actually get the foundation in place, which is durability and convenience. And oh, by the way, health and affordability and the fact that it shouldn't smell like my shoe, which presently my hotel room does. And often we put the fiberglass bat insulation in there to stop the sound to make sure that there's a large temperature difference so that we guarantee condensation occurs for most of the time in a vented attic where the venting, that vented attic is halfway between indoors and outdoors. Except that in the summertime it's much, much, much hotter because when the sun shines on it. So that's the hottest place anywhere on this picture. It's right there. So that would be the ideal location for air conditioning ducts, right? Find the hottest spot in the building and let's run our ducts through it. Sealants, the pookie that Joe spoke of, uh, you know, I usually give them a lifespan of between five minutes and five years, uh, but if you read the actual container, it says five to 25 years. Of course, the container also says apply to a warm, dust-free, dry surface, and therefore there are none on a building site, and so, of course, the warranty is void the moment you use it on a construction site. There are, there's no adult in charge that can tell you what each of these layers is supposed to do. And so people are substituting materials because one's cheaper or the salesman said theirs is a better color on it, and they don't even know what the function's for. Some people think the house, this, this, these Tyvek things are vapor barriers. I hear that all the time. Wasn't the Tyvek a vapor barrier? It's an anti-vapor barrier. You know, is it an air barrier? Well, not if you don't tape and seal the seams and support it mechanically. Of course it's not an air barrier. How would I know that? Well, because I know what the requirements are for an air barrier. 2,000 years ago, we knew that building the same building in Memphis as Miami was a dumb idea. And Monterey and, and, uh, and Mojave, to use uh, Steebrick's examples, I mean, that would be silly. We knew this 2,000 years ago. And yet if I pick up a, a magazine of industrial, architectural, commercial architecture, I can't tell by looking at the picture where that building is. You use bio nanotechnology uh, trees to provide shade. So as you get further north, you can actually get trees that lose their leaves when it gets cold so that more sun hits the building. And then they get the leaves back again when it gets warm. And this is all done automatically and self-adjust for climate change so that if, it, if the leaves have to come out a week later or a week earlier, it knows that you'd have to plant a tree. And that's, of course, not architecture. Because AutoCAD, everything's nice and square. Have you seen the AutoCAD steel studs? They're all square edged, right? And you know how the concrete slab is actually flat? And it comes to a right angled turn, and it's exactly two, you know, eight inches thick? But that never happens in real life. Literally never. The continuous insulation is the heat flow and, and, uh, condens and condensation control. Remember, insulation can be used to stop condensation as much as it can be used to cause it. It depends where you put it. That's what this course is about. When we're looking at a, the building enclosure, I have these nine components that I can usually identify on the drawings. If I can't identify them, uh, I ask, are you sure you didn't want this? So sometimes, for example, the vapor control, uh, we have to ask, do you, you want a barrier, retarder, or none at all? But you have to, have to ask whether it's there. Now the reason I call this a dumb wall assembly is of course it doesn't, it doesn't control heat flow. So if it, the heat just goes through the concrete. We do know that concrete is not a good insulation product. Right, so if you go to the aisles in the home desk pot and look under insulation, you will not find concrete. And that's because concrete is a very bad insulator. And so the heat just flows in. This, I can tell a second year architecture student, do this all the time and you won't get sued. If this is the only wall you design, then we don't have to worry about it. 
You just do worry about the details. Curtain walls are more expensive per square foot than any other enclosure system and have a lower performance than almost any other enclosure system. The inverted roof is the one that, from a building science durability perspective, is, is by far and away superior. The roof membrane is kept below the insulation level, and of course, that means that it's kept uh, warm and protected from ultraviolet radiation and protected from foot traffic. Right, so it's a no-brainer that this is the way you make the membrane last a long, long time. How long? Well, typically double what it is from on top. And so if you're doing a drawing review, and I don't care whether I'm, I'm looking at a 700,000 square foot building right now, or an 800 square foot house, a, high a highly energy efficient house, we do a drawing review, same red circles is what I'm looking for. And that in modern architecture, if we do multi-unit family buildings, basically this is what they look like, right? I've tried to include every possible detail on this drawing. And that's what architects try when they design multi-unit buildings that look interesting. They include every possible leak or failure location possible. And so we need to get each one of these things with a detail, preferably one to five. 